But what he says is, is very true for me, too, because um, uh, some actors work cerebrally, some work uh, physically. I like to work physically a lot of times. It helps. Brilliant, mysterious, and with a bit of grumpiness, Robert De Niro is the master of the silver screen. But now at 80, fans have been saying that how he lives is sad. You see, Robert De Niro, known for his tough on and off screen persona, has long kept his personal life under wraps. But now, you'll be shocked to know about the recent incidents in his life that shed a harsh light on his once highly private world. Let's start from the very beginning. Robert's early life. Robert Anthony De Niro Jr. was born on August 17, 1943, right in New York City, and grew up in the neighborhood of Greenwich Village. His parents, Virginia and Robert De Niro Sr., were both talented artists, and it seems creativity ran in the family from the start. From a young age, De Niro was drawn to the world of acting and the arts. At the tender age of 10, he took to the stage for the first time in a school play. He had his sights set on acting, so he dropped out of high school to chase his dreams. Before long, he found his way into theaters across the city. His journey to the silver screen wasn't exactly straightforward, though. While his first film role was actually in a low-budget comedy, The Wedding Party, the film would not be released until 1969. Before that, in 1965, he landed a role in a French comedy called Three Rooms in Manhattan, marking the beginning of his journey on the big screen. However, his big break came with Mean Streets in 1973, directed by the talented Martin Scorsese. That film was also the beginning of his collaboration with Scorsese leading to the latest film, Killers of the Flower Moon, where we also see Leonardo DiCaprio, another brilliant actor. DiCaprio shared how working alongside De Niro is one of the most impactful experiences he's ever had, watching De Niro's dedication and professionalism up close. He takes his characters too seriously. De Niro's commitment to his roles is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Take, for instance, The Godfather 2. While the cameras were rolling elsewhere, De Niro took off to Sicily to immerse in the culture and learn the language. He got so good at it that he even helped rewrite the Sicilian dialogue in the movie to add some authenticity. And that's not all. For New York, New York, he actually learned to play the saxophone, even though the music was dubbed in the final cut. And when it came to Taxi Driver, De Niro went the extra mile and got himself a real cab driver's license. And let's not forget about Raging Bull. To fit into his character, he put on about 60 pounds, halting filming for months. He later admitted it was quite the ordeal, experiencing firsthand the challenges of carrying extra weight. And for Cape Fear, he went as far as visiting a dentist to mess up his teeth, only to have them fixed after filming wrapped up. De Niro's passion for acting wasn't limited to just performing on screen. He also took on roles behind the scenes and helped start the Tribeca Film Festival in 2002 after the tragic events of September 11. He believed in the healing power of movies and wanted to breathe new life into Lower Manhattan through the magic of cinema. Since then, the festival has blossomed into a vibrant stage for independent filmmakers, showcasing a diverse array of captivating films that make you think. Despite his dedication to his craft, some people have said De Niro can be a bit tricky to work with. But during an interview in 2008, he brushed off those rumors saying, compared to others, I don't think I'm all that difficult. Making movies is tough enough as it is, he pointed out, so there's no need to make it harder for anyone. Everyone's got their own agenda, he admitted, but there's no point in dragging personal baggage onto a film set. Why does he avoid interviews? De Niro might not always be difficult to collaborate with, but his journey through fame hasn't been without its difficult moments, especially when it comes to dealing with the press. Back in the early days, facing the media was like stepping into unfamiliar territory for him. He's more of a private person who finds comfort in expressing himself through his craft, not through interviews and spotlight moments. When Vanity Fair came knocking in 1987, De Niro wasn't exactly eager to spill his life story. He questioned the importance of discussing trivial things like where he went to school and his hobbies, wondering what any of that had to do with acting or his own thoughts. As he rose to stardom, 
He learned to put up a barrier between himself and the invasive questions, finding solace in maintaining a sense of privacy. As time went on, De Niro did start to open up a bit more in interviews, but he was careful to keep things mostly focused on his work. It seems he learned his boundaries early on. Take, for instance, his encounter with parade writer Barbara Goldsmith back in 1984. After chatting with her, he later called to make sure she knew what topics were off-limits. But when the article came out, he ended up regretting the whole conversation. According to Sean Levy's biography, De Niro A Life, even professional interviews weren't always smooth sailing for the actor. The media frenzy surrounding New York, New York got so overwhelming that De Niro took a break from interviews for four whole years afterwards. Now, despite his efforts to maintain some privacy, controversies still found their way to him. But perhaps one of the most bizarre chapters in De Niro's life came recently, when he found himself in a highly publicized civil trial. De Niro got sued by someone who used to work closely with him, his former assistant and vice president of his company, Graham Chase Robinson. She claimed he was a tough boss and wanted a whopping $12 million for all the stress and damage to her reputation. But De Niro fired back with a lawsuit of his own, asking for $6 million from Robinson. Why? Well, he said she had been splurging company cash on her own travels and meals. He also accused Robinson of spending way too much time glued to Netflix during office hours. What made him shout in the courtroom? Things got heated in that courtroom. De Niro was downright furious, according to the people covering the trial. He was shouting, grumpy, and just plain fed up. In fact, things got so tense that even the judge had to step in and calm everyone down. Actually, there were some pretty wild accusations thrown around. Like De Niro allegedly asked his assistant to scratch his back. When she suggested using a back scratcher instead, he supposedly said, I like the way you do it. De Niro says he might have asked once or twice, but he swears he never meant it in a rude way. It was this specific allegation that prompted De Niro to shout shame on you across a New York courtroom. Then he had to apologize to the judge. She also claimed that De Niro called her not once, but twice while she was at her grandmother's funeral, just because he wanted her to buy a bus ticket for his teenage son. When asked about it, De Niro's response was a bit surprising. He just said, so? Robinson also said that De Niro expected her to be at his call all the time. He even wanted her to decorate his Christmas tree and mend his clothes. De Niro, on the other hand, defended himself in court. He said he only asked her to do things that were reasonable and part of her job. He even said, it's not like I'm telling her to go out and scrape floors, so this is all nonsense. He can't tolerate nonsense. Now this trial is giving us a glimpse of De Niro's grumpy side. But you know what? He's always been a bit of a grumpy old man in Hollywood. For six decades, he's carved out a reputation for himself as a tough guy, a loner who doesn't suffer fools gladly. Whether it's a politician or a reporter, if they're acting confused or foolish, De Niro isn't afraid to let them know. Back in 2015, there was quite a stir when De Niro walked out of an interview with Radio Times because he didn't like the questions. He even asked her to stop recording, got up, and started pacing around. Interviewer Emma Brockus later mentioned she felt sorry for De Niro, who seemed a bit grumpy and tired after a long day of interviews, but she wasn't too pleased with his unfriendly attitude. Then one time, at an awards ceremony, he had some strong words for the bosses of Flickr and Slack. Stuart Butterfield, a big name in the tech world, said something about De Niro's movie Godfather 2, thinking it was all in good fun. But De Niro didn't find it funny at all. When he got his turn to speak, he didn't hold back. He basically told the guy he was being disrespectful to actors like him. This whole thing, De Niro keeping to himself, getting easily annoyed in interviews, and not being afraid to speak his mind, has made him a bit grumpy. But this thing has also caused problems for him. He was the target of a pipe bomb. Back in October 2018, something shocking happened. You see, De Niro wasn't afraid to speak out against the then-president Donald Trump. And because of that, he became a target. Someone actually sent a pipe bomb to his office. It's frightening to think about. But thankfully, the authorities caught wind of it before anyone got hurt. It wasn't just De Niro who was targeted, though. Packages were also sent to other important figures like Joe Biden, Barack Obama, and Hillary Clinton. 
The person behind it all was caught and put away for a long time, but it must have been terrifying for them. Despite the scare, De Niro didn't back down. He used the incident to remind everyone of the power of their vote. There's something more powerful than bombs, he said, and that's your vote. People must vote. If you look beyond his tough persona, you'll find that Robert De Niro has a softer side too. He's got this whole other part of him that's all about family and feelings. Take his dad, Robert De Niro Sr., for instance. He was a celebrated artist, but he passed away back in 1993, leaving behind a legacy that his son De Niro wanted to keep alive. So he helped put together this film about his dad's life and work as a tribute. It's called Remembering the Artist Robert De Niro Sr. And even after all these years since his dad's been gone, De Niro still keeps his dad's art studio exactly the way it was. It's like preserving a piece of his dad's soul, he says. But it wasn't always easy between them. He admits they never really had those heart-to-heart -heart talks about art or anything deep like that. His parents split when he was young and as he got older, he realized just how much his dad cared for him and what he was struggling with. Yet there were things left unsaid, things he wished they'd talked about, his turbulent love life. Now let's talk about De Niro's own struggles in his personal life. Back in 1976, he married a talented actress named Diane Abbott. They had a son named Raphael and were married for 12 years. Robert also became a dad to Diane's daughter Drina from her previous marriage. Sadly, they decided to part ways in 1988. Then in 1995, Robert and his girlfriend Tukey Smith welcomed twin boys, Julian and Aaron, using something called in vitro fertilization. They had been together since the 80s, but unfortunately things didn't work out and they went their separate ways in 1996. But love found Robert again. In the following year, he tied the knot with Grace Hightower, who used to work as a model and a flight attendant. Together, they have a boy named Elliot and a girl named Helen Grace. Now, their journey wasn't all smooth either. They had their ups and downs breaking up and making up more than once. Fast forward to November 2018, and De Niro announced that his second marriage, spanning over 20 years, had come to an end. In a note he sent to the media, De Niro mentioned how this change is tough but necessary for both of them. He praised Grace for being a fantastic mother and asked everyone to give them some space and respect during this time as they figure things out together. However, it seems like things got a bit complicated during their split. De Niro's lawyer, Caroline Krauss, mentioned in court that he had to take on jobs he wasn't too happy about just to support Grace financially. Imagine that, working long hours just to keep up with expenses. Krauss even mentioned how important it is for De Niro to take care of himself because you never know what might happen tomorrow. Fast forward to 2021, and the divorce was finally settled. They stuck to their prenuptial agreement, which meant Grace got $6 million to find herself a new home, and she also got half of the money from selling their $20 million house. On top of that, De Niro agreed to pay her $1 million every year. That's a lot of money, isn't it? But wait, there's more sadness in De Niro's life. Loss of his grandson. Last year, he had to go through another tough time. He lost his grandson, Leandro De Niro Rodriguez. The then 79-year-old actor expressed his deep sorrow in a statement, saying how much he misses his dear grandson, Leo. Leo was the son of De Niro's daughter, Drena De Niro, and Carlos Rodriguez, and was just 19 years old at the time of death. After the cause of his death was revealed to be a mixture of different drugs, Drena stood up for her late son. She took to social media saying, I see many blaming my son for his drug use, blaming me as his mother for my pain and anger at losing my only child, and even blaming his grandfather, as if he had control over U.S. borders but blaming won't solve anything. She continued speaking of Leo's struggles during the pandemic and how addiction tragically took over. She urged people to consider the emotional toll of their words before attacking others online. Now at 80 years old, De Niro's heart still aches from the awful tragedy. He admits to feeling a deep shock saying, I never thought it would happen. Even with all his success and fame, he's just like any grandparent who can't bear the thought of losing a loved one in such a way. Thinking back on it all, De Niro wonders if there was more he could have done for his grandson. He's haunted by thoughts of what might have been, questioning if anything could have changed the outcome. It's a heavy burden for anyone to carry, especially someone as beloved as Robert De Niro. 
Weeks after Leo's overdose, authorities arrested a young woman named Sophia Marks, a suspected drug dealer linked to his death. According to reports, Sophia Marks could face up to 20 years in prison for her involvement. The whole family still feels the weight of Leo's absence, and they're all hoping for justice to prevail. It's a tough road they're on together, searching for closure and peace. Now, despite enduring enough sadness to last a lifetime by the age of 80, De Niro recently found a glimmer of joy. He shared in May 2023 that he became a father once again, at the ripe age of 79, making him one of Hollywood's oldest dads. The announcement came during an interview with ET Canada, where he was asked about what it feels like to be a father to six children. He corrected them, saying he actually has seven. By the time De Niro shared the news, about a month had flown by since the little one named Gia Virginia Chen De Niro, daughter of his sweetheart Tiffany Chen, arrived. De Niro has always kept his private life closely guarded, and even in this case it was a surprise for everyone including his close friends. Now you might think, isn't he a bit old for all this? Well, not according to De Niro. He's loving every minute of being an 80-year-old dad. He even confessed that the pregnancy was planned. But when De Niro talked about his newborn, he couldn't help but got emotional. In an interview, he poured his heart out saying, when he looks at her, all his worries just melt away. He took a moment, clearly overwhelmed with feelings before adding, it's wondrous. She has a very sweet kind of way of looking at you and just taking you in. Now, he might feel great being a father again, but taking care of a newborn at this stage of life isn't easy. De Niro admits he's not the one doing all the heavy lifting. He said he supports his girlfriend, but she is the real hero, doing most of the hard work. And of course, they've got some wonderful help, which he considers a blessing. Is he going to retire soon? Despite being at an age when many people are thinking about retirement, De Niro is still going strong. He's not just a dad, he's also a busy man with a lot on his plate. Running his restaurants like the famous Nobu sushi chain keeps him busy, and the word retirement doesn't seem to be in his vocabulary. Movies have always been my passion, he said with a smile. Whether I'm acting, directing, or producing, I just can't get enough and I've got plenty more projects in the pipeline. Despite the challenges he's faced, from a tough divorce to regrets about his relationship with his father and the heartbreaking loss of his grandson, Robert De Niro remains resilient. His strength in the face of adversity, his dedication to his work and his commitment to making a difference through charity work make him a true role model. And his ability to bring characters to life on screen well, that's something that'll be remembered long after the credits roll. What's your favorite character performed by De Niro? Let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more video updates. Until next time, stay tuned.